Hello there, Richard here, another blend, quick blender tutorial and today we're looking at how to make a basic crystal scene by using some of the shapes and built-in features within the blender. No plugins required, just a bit of lighting, H download a HDRI for the reflection and some lighting and then take it from there. So you should, be, by the end of it, you should create something a little bit like this. So I'm going to use like the bloom options and other things as well. Alright, so we're going to start a new project. So for now, we don't need anything in the scene, so if you just press A, while you're in object mode, it will automatically select everything within the scene, but make sure <laughs> that is the, the correct option you want to get so far into a project and actually delete everything, and just press delete. So for this one, I'm going to shift and A, go into meshes, you have a, a range of different ones here, but we're going to go for a cylinder, so we're going to retransform this a little bit by reducing the subdivisions, all the vertices. So currently it's on 32, I'm going to go down to 12. But feel free to experiment with this because it depends what you want to make really so but for me I'm gonna go with 12 and then we're gonna reshape this into like a little crystal effect so I'm going to side view go to wireframe make sure in edit mode as well because the reason why I use wireframe is because we need to see right through it and also select our edges and points well edges and face and, and points really because faces you want to be on solid frame really but so we're going to use our loop select, click on it in the center, if you press G, but make sure you press it twice because otherwise once you just get this weird deformity. Great if you're doing some sort of animation effect. And then press G again and just bring it up in this per this. Yeah. And then we're going to use our points. Oop, make sure you un un unselect it. Select the top points, side view. And if you press S just to scale it in. If you go too far, obviously it gets, the mesh gets weird, but for now we'll leave it like that. Um, depends on what you want to do, really. Some obviously, if you look at references, some crystals are nice and flat, but I want a single straight point. So why these are currently selected? If you right-click, scroll down to mer uh, merge vertices, and click on at center, and then we get this little point here. So while it's selected, let's bring this up. Select these ones as well and just bring this one down because we're going to make a nice, decent sized crystal. So, And while these are currently selected as well, we're going to re re reform this, reshape it. So press S to scale it in. And you see now we're getting this random crystal effect. So tab, bring it up. Oop, my bad. Go to shade edit. And you can see we've got this nice little crystal effect, but of course, a couple of tints as well. If you click on render properties or shading, sorry, go on cavity, and you can see the cavity is quite nice, and it gives you an idea what you're working with. Highly recommend that you sort of use that option, especially if you're doing hard surface modeling. If you're doing organic modeling, uh, it might not work as well, you're still, especially, especially with all the details you're using the sculpturing brushes, but for now, this will do us quite fine. So, as you can see, we've got a nice little crystal effect going on, so but. I want to retrain change this a little bit as well. So, so we'll select this, go back to edit. So, go to tab. I'm going to bring these points down a little bit. So, so I'm going to select each one of these little points. So, select one, miss one, select one, miss one. And then just bring this down just a little bit. So go back to object mode. A bit more crystally now. So what we're going to do now is add a bevel to it. So you could use like hard hops and all that good stuff as well, but we're going to use the built-in one. So if you click on to render pro um, uh, add modifiers, excuse me, and we're going to add a bevel. So again, in this case, like an experimenting, so you can go to vertices, get these nice little cuts and that, or we'll go for edges. Just bring these in just a little bit, not too much. And then, just, then remember to apply it, because if you're done with them, just apply them. Because you'll find that some add modifiers, when they're on here, if you go to edit mode, it, it won't allow you to edit certain things. It's like trying to drive where a parking brake on, it just won't happen. But so just apply it, and then we can move on. 
Of course, I want to move this pivot point as well because um, I'm going to move it to the bottom so I can freely duplicate it and move it in different directions from the point for this origin here. So, so to do that, click on the options, origin, and if you zoom in, you'll see now the Y and the Z axis are actually showing. So just click on the Z, bring it all the way down. This is very useful for individuals who are doing animation as well, because you're going to have to use your move your pivot point if you want to animate using the rotation tool or anything like that, of course. But make sure you untick it, and then that that's it. That's its new origin point now, as you can see. But that will make sense shortly. Control Z to go back, or edit, undo, or redo if you want to go forward. Right. So what we're going to do now is add a little plane. And this will use it as like a little base because we're going to add like reflections and reflections and all that good stuff as well. But we don't want to be touching our plane, so we'll click on plane. Options here. Click on selectable, and then tick the box, tick this little arrow here, and now we can touch everything in the in the scene except for the plane. But we'll come back to that because we will be adding a basic texture to it so so for now let's texture our uh, crystal shall we so we're going to manage materials properties usually if you hover your mouse around the, the settings it usually tells you what it is if you're unsure so <laughs> click on new so we'll give it a base color of blue obviously first we need to make sure we're not in wireframe or solid shader you can't see your textures while you're currently this obviously we're going to shading you can do but I prefer to do everything in layout so <laughs> That's how I work. Everyone works differently. So, and of course, on the base color, everything is pretty set, pretty much set to default. There's no reflection. There's no no go set. So, so on here, we're going to bring a metallic all the way up, and it will give us this nice metallic metal look. But of course, we need to bring the the roughness down. So, so if you scroll down here, it says roughness. Bring it all the way down, or most of the way down. So you get this nice little crystal effect. Bring the transmission up. <coughs> Pardon me. And you see now you start getting this nice little crystal-like effect. Now, we can take this server, obviously we can add additional colours and that, but let's we'll keep it simple for now because it's a basic scene. But I want to add additional crystals, so the reason I put this at the bottom, so if I go to side view, for example, if I press shift and D, everything should go white. If you press enter, then it will go orange, then it will duplicate it. But also duplicate, it's not only the, the, the model, but also your textures as well. But if you find that the, you don't want to use the te same textures, all you've got to do is go to your materials tab and just delete it. So by pressing the little minus key here, so. And then from the side view, we are just going to start adding additional crystals and you can make them smaller bigger it's entirely up to you so you know just look at a geode and see how crystals are forming random collections and directions so so just gonna quickly just do something of course we start having this now so so we're going to select all our crystals, you press Ctrl and J, that will merge them all together, so that makes our t area, our layers here quite uh, tidier, or you can put them into a new collection, so you can just right click, move down, stick them into a new collection and just have that purely for your rocks, so, or your crystals, or your lights, or whatever you're currently working on. So Shift and D, and just start tampering really, and start forming. And as you can see, there's not very much time. I mean, it is quite low poly, not a massive amount of details, but this would be good for like f objects and assets to be used in a background on a cave wall. If you were ha making a, a, a stylized pirate scene and you want to make some like chests with some coins, now you can make some little crystals and stuff like this using the same method. It's not a problem. So we're going to add a texture to our plane. So again, unselect it, well, reselect it. 
and we'll just make this slightly darker because we're going to add a reflection within our scene so all this will be reflected quite nicely but if we're going to full render view right now everything is quite dark because there's no lighting there's no HDRI so what we're going to do next so we can get some lighting in here so we go to our world editor click on color and then go on to environment texture everything should go purple you'll find if things have gone purple within your scene either your models or the environment is because the texture is missing yeah you just got to reapply it so open find a HDRI and there you go we get our reflections from the HDRI and also the lighting the lighting will also reflect from there so if it was quite a dark sky the crystal would be quite dark it, but of course it's quite distracting so what we need to do a little camera that says render properties scroll down it says filmic and change that to transparent so now we can work without all this distraction and we've also got the reflections and the lighting as well but while we're in here as well so I'm going to change color management if you scroll down you should say RGB filmic when it says lock look we're going to change that to very high contrast and you can see you get a much nicer contrast here it's like being in Photoshop when you're using camera raw with your photos so you can determine the hue and saturation and all that good stuff so pretty much the same thing right so what I'm going to do is get our floor add a, add a material to it well we've already done that haven't we my bad because <laughs> we're getting that lighting but what we want now is some reflections as well so if we go on to render, render properties again scroll up if you click on it says screen space reflections click on that one you see now it's all merged you get this nice reflection look so even though it's low poly it still works and then add additional but of course feel free to experiment with the roughness here see so, and you get this really nice effect but <coughs> To get that nice little flicker effect, I find if you're turning on bloom, it works quite nicely as well. So, see. So, if you did like a nice little animation loop, or we'll put it on a ring. And that's basically it. So, you see, though, we've made with a couple of short steps, we've actually made quite a decent looking little crystal. But if you want to mess around with the colours and change out, you can, you can do that as well. So, for example, if I select the back, this back one here, make it different from this. So go back to the change this one option to shade editor. As I mentioned before, if you don't want to use the same materials, all you got to do is just delete it. So, in fact, what we'll do, we'll copy that. We'll copy it delete it so we can keep the settings so all we're going to do is change the color so we'll delete the principle to be yes so now it's going to be in a new new shader same settings but we're going to change the colors a little bit so for those of you who do a bit bit of a photoshop as well you can use like color gradients we can do the same thing here so so we add a color ramp also a noise texture So it's going to be color to base color, factor to factor. And of course, this will go all black and white and gray because, as you can see here, it's going off the color, off the main color. So we'll increase that so we can have go for a nice red instead. Yeah, we'll go for a red instead. But if we want to mix this up a little bit, so we we'll just bring this across. And add another one. You see now you get the random colours merging together, so and we're using a the noise texture to get some like well <laughs> some different types of details so you can also use this to animate as well so as you can see 
It's a case of experimenting really and see what works what doesn't. You see you get this nice little warp effect within the crystal. <coughs> That's it really. Hope you found that helpful. A couple of hints and tips there, how to make a basic little ice crystal scene. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.